Imaging guided medical procedures are or should be a routine part of the clinical practice in gynecological oncology. Ultrasound may be a valuable tool that allows a reduction in the invasiveness of the procedure in some patients and that may accelerate the process from diagnosis to therapy or shorten the period of recovery. Histological verification is a precondition for starting treatment of any solid tumor. The purpose of biopsy is to obtain a representative tissue sample which would make the establishment of a valid histopathological diagnosis possible without unnecessary harm to the patient or further delay in oncological treatment. If we try to define an ideal bioptic method, it should be as minimally invasive as possible. It should be an outpatient procedure without any harm of patient's performance status, with no need of general anesthesia, without spread of tumor cells, and avoiding delay of subsequent treatment of the malignant disease. Among bioptic techniques available in gynecological oncology, neither laparotomy nor laparoscopy for tumor sampling satisfies these requirements. Currently, two methods are acceptable, fine needle aspiration biopsy and trucat biopsy, which represent minimally invasive approaches to gain a sample of cells or clusters of cells for fine needle aspiration biopsy or a block of tumor tissue for trucat biopsy. We prefer trucat biopsy over fine needle aspiration. Trucat biopsy is an optimal minimally invasive sampling method for establishing a histological diagnosis. Through trucat, or also called core cut biopsy, a cylinder of compact tissue of 10 to 20 mm long and 1.4 to 2 mm wide is obtained. The sample suffices for histopathological examination identification of tumor structure, tumor cell morphology, and architecture and immunohistochemical staining. The trucat needle is comprised of two parts, the inner notched cannula and the outer case. The needle is introduced into the tumor under ultrasound guidance. When the biopsy gun is triggered, the inner notched cannula is ejected first followed by the outer case, which closes the cylinder-shaped tissue in the inner cannula notch. The biopsy gun is mechanical. It uses a spring-activated mechanism. After the trigger is pulled and squeezed, both parts of the needle are ejected forward in a fraction of a second. For trucat biopsy, we use different types of disposable needles of different lengths and widths from 18 for transvaginal to 16 and 14 gauge for transabdominal approach. Several bioptic guns, same as for corkat biopsy of the breast, are available with adjustable throw according to the size of lesion to be sampled. For transvaginal approach, we use guides attached to transvaginal ultrasound probe, the same as for example we use for standard procedure of all-site retrieval. For transabdominal biopsy, a GE manufactured set ready to use is available. The set contains sterile probe cover, sterile sonographic gel, set of needle guides for different needle widths, and attachable device to abdominal probe bracket. Choose appropriate needle guide according to the width of needle, usually 16 or rarely 14 gauge. Assemble it with the other holding part of the guide. Snap it onto attachment area of the bracket and lock it. You can adjust an angle of throw according to your software navigation line by pulling up the lock pin and move to desired angle. This device attached to the transabdominal ultrasound probe 
allows you to simply keep the desired direction of biopsy during the whole procedure, specifically for deeper or small lesions. The most frequent indication for trucat biopsy is a primarily inoperable, or we call that suboptimally operable, pelvic or abdominal tumor. In large institutions, the suboptimal operability criteria, it has no chance to achieve optimal debulking, which means no residual tumor at the end of surgery, usually include the presence of multiple non-resecable parenchymatous metastases, lymphadenopathy above the level of renal veins, spread on small intestine loop surface, and nodular disease in mesentery. Other indications include impossibility of carrying out other types of bioptic verification, surgery in particular, due to either an overall poor condition of the patient or comorbidities. Suspicious metastasis of a known non-gynecological tumor in the pelvic region or suspicious recurrence of gynecological tumor in case of doubts. We do trucat biopsy also if ultrasound indicates that pelvic tumor is probably of non-gynecological origin and there is no other non-invasive method available to sample the tumor. A biopsy may also be beneficial in some cases of indubitable tumor recurrence since the histopathological examination, namely immunohistochemistry, may provide a new piece of information that can be used to assist decision-making regarding further treatment. The indication of hormonal therapy in the case of endometrial or ovarian carcinoma recurrence may serve as an example. In 2010, we published the largest series of trucat biopsies so far. Majority of biopsies have been done for suboptimal operable advanced tumors, about one-third for suspicious duplicity, which means presence of metastatic tumor in the pelvis or abdomen, approximately one-third for suspicious recurrent disease in case of doubts of presence of recurrence, and approximately one-quarter for suspicious or apparent extragenital tumor in the pelvis or in the abdomen. Patient must be given written and spoken description of the procedure and has to give an informed consent. Patients do not need to fast before having trucat biopsy. Coagulation parameters, international normalized ratio and activated partial thromboplastin time and blood count should be made in advance. The procedure is done on an outpatient basis. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory analgetics can be administered prior to the procedure, mostly through rectal application approximately 30 minutes before the procedure. Patients should also be instructed that spotting or mild vaginal bleeding as well as mild pain in the abdomen may occur after biopsy and usually dissolves within 24 hours. This short video illustrates how trucat biopsy is done. We are placing the needle into the biopsy gun and then loading the gun. You can see guide attached to transvaginal ultrasound probe and you can see how needle is guided. After disinfection of vagina, we care to find an optimal site for biopsy and usually we do two to three biopsies from this side. This is how the needle goes into the tumor. For transabdominal approach, we use infiltration of skin and subcutaneous tissue with local anesthetics first. Then we do the biopsy with free hand navigation in the same way as for example amniotic fluid sampling is done. Here you can see how the tip of the needle is placed at the edge of the tumor and biopsy is done. And this is the cylindric shaped block of tissue closed in the bioptic needle. And the sample 
is then transferred into the formalin to be fixed. An example of transabdominal trucat biopsy. We can see how the tip of the needle is placed at the edge of tumor. Needle penetrates into the tumor during shot and then is removed with block of tissue closed inside. For lesions localized superficially, typically in the groins or on the neck, we can rather use linear than convex ultrasound probe. Here we can see rounded infiltrated lymph node in the groin and removal of needle after the biopsy. Trucat biopsy is a very precise method and allows us for making biopsy even in such risky regions as we can see here, making trucat biopsy from infiltrated lymph node sitting tightly on external iliac vessels on the left pelvic side wall. Samples are most often collected from primarily inoperable abdominopelvic tumors or their metastatic lesions such as carcinomatosis, omentum, lymph nodes or liver. In the largest published series so far, the biopsy success rate amounted to more than 90%. The biggest success rate was achieved in biopsy from carcinomatosis, the lowest in biopsy from lymph nodes. Doppler can help to distinguish between vital and necrotic portion of the tumor and can allow to focus biopsy on vital part of the tumor. We also carefully measure the lesion in the direction of needle insertion to set appropriate and safe throw of the shot. This is a biopsy of movable tumor near the vaginal trunk. The insertion of the needle must be done fast to avoid unnecessary pain for the patient and limit movement of the patient. After the bioptic shot, site of biopsy is checked for signs of intra-abdominal bleeding. Two or three biopsies are usually enough for complex histopathological examination, including immunohistochemistry. Here we can see trail after first bioptic shot and now we are choosing site to cover as much of the vital tumor volume as possible. Use Doppler and take your time to find an optimal site for biopsy. We prefer the most solid mass or carcinomatosis. Make the insertion of the needle fast to reduce patient's pain. Check bleeding after biopsy, however, in almost all the cases, some bleeding is present, but stops immediately and spontaneously. If you see continuous bleeding on recheck, first monitor the patient and make intervention, for example laparoscopy, only in symptoms of hemoperitoneum. After the procedure, patient remains at the ward for at least 30 minutes, whilst her overall condition and possible hemorrhage are monitored. The biopsy can be performed safely through the urinary bladder. The patient is not at risk even in case of puncture through the rectal wall, as a biopsy can be performed transrectally, as well with a preoperative antibiotic treatment. The organs susceptible to high risk are jejunum, and the parenchymal organs, liver, spleen and kidneys. Therefore, in the case of a clear perforation of the small intestine during the biopsy, an initially expectative approach is selected. Subjective difficulties after the biopsy are not common. Occasionally, a transient pain can be felt at the point of puncture or vaginal spotting or bleeding. Collapse conditions due to peritoneal irritation can also occur. 
In the largest published series so far, the biopsy success rate, adequacy, it is the percentage of patients from whom a sample sufficient for complete histopathological examination was obtained, amounted to 93.9%. The concordance between bioptic histology and final histology from surgery was 98.3% of cases which means inconsistency in the case of mucinous carcinoma and leiomyosarcoma, the primary origin of nature of which is difficult to determine even from a greater material load. Complications during biopsies are rare. In the group of 195 biopsy cases, only two cases were with complications, which means slightly more than 1%, and bleeding into the abdominal cavity was observed in both cases. In patients with operable disease on imaging, surgery is preferred over biopsy, except patients who are not suitable to undergo surgery due to poor overall condition or severe intercurrent disease. When lymphoma is suspected, it's still more preferable to perform extirpation of the complete node than mere trucat biopsy. Conditions such as congenital coagulopathy, e.g. hemophilia, or acquired bleeding disorders, thrombocytopenia, chronic disseminated intravascular coagulation syndrome, present relative contraindications to the procedure. However, they do not mean an absolute contraindication Hence, relevant preparation by a hematologist prior to the procedure itself is needed. Trucat biopsy is an ideal method for obtaining sufficient bioptic sample. While fine needle aspiration biopsy sample represent either isolated cells or clusters of cells suitable for cytologic evaluation only, Trucat biopsy allows for gaining a compact block of tissue suitable for complete histopathological evaluation, including immunohistochemistry. In conclusion, the Trucat biopsy is a simple, mini-invasive bioptic method, which is highly accurate and has a high adequacy rate. It is safe and avoids postponing of subsequent cancer treatment.